Hello friends, today we're going to be talking about how a stop light switch, also sometimes called a brake light switch works, and the difference between a 2 and 4 pin brake light switch. So looking through the fuse panel cover here, we can see our brake light switch. It is fixed in place, it has 4 wires going to it. It is normally depressed by the brake pedal. As you can see here, when we press the brake pedal down, the switch is effectively released, completing the circuit, turning the brake lights on. We're going to talk about this more later in the video, but for now it's important to note that a 4-wire connector and 4-wire switch are necessary for cruise control. And some Mirages come from the factory either with a 4-wire connector but a 2-wire switch, or a 2-wire switch and 2-wire connector. Here is a photo of the pedal area of a manual Mitsubishi Mirage. Going from left to right, to start in green we have the clutch pedal. Then in red on top we have the clutch switch that's used for cruise control. Cruise control is immediately disabled when you begin to depress the clutch. On red on the bottom is the clutch interlock switch. The vehicle can only be started when the clutch is fully depressed. That's why adding an aftermarket remote starter to a manual vehicle often requires the use of a neutral safety switch. Then in yellow we have the stop light switch which is what we're discussing today and then in purple is the master cylinder that goes through the firewall and is essentially the cylinder that holds all the flu brake fluid then in blue is the steering column here's a diagram of the brake pedal with the stop light switch depicted as number two i was unaware of this but apparently you can adjust the master cylinder push rod length so that the pedal has enough travel without hitting the floor mat to fully apply the brakes. And the stop light switch can also be adjusted in distance to ensure that it is being fully depressed when the pedal is not depressed. You have a manual transmission without cruise control. As you can see in the diagram, the stop light switch has a four pin connector, but only two of the pins are used, pins one and two. When the brake pedal is depressed, the switch is released and continuity exists between pins 1 and 2, which turns on the brake lights. Here is what a two-terminal stoplight switch looks like. For vehicles with cruise control, a four-terminal stoplight switch is used. Terminals 3 and 4 have the inverse behavior of terminals 1 and 2, so when the lights are on, terminals 3 and 4 have no continuity, they are disconnected, and when the brake lights are off, terminals 3 and 4 have continuity. Together we are going to unbox, test, and disassemble this four terminal stoplights which I got on AliExpress. Taking a closer look at the four terminal connector here, what's interesting is you can see this giant plastic blob that prevents you from plugging the connector in backwards. What's also interesting is the shaft is only threaded on two sides, allowing you to adjust the height of the stoplight switch without having to twist it much preventing you from tangling up the cable. Now we're going to grab our multimeter, set it to continuity test mode, and test the stoplight switch. So as you can see here, when there is very low resistance between the multimeter leads, a noise is made. We are going to start by testing pins 3 and 4, which are for the brake monitoring switch. Remember that the brake pedal when not depressed is normally pushing against this switch. So this switch right now when I depress it is what it's like when the brake pedal is not depressed. Now we're going to test pins 1 and 2 which make up the normal stoplight switch. So as you can see, there's this constant noise because the switch is released when the brakes are pressed. And when I push in, it's like the brake pedal has been released and the noise goes away. One thing that's really ingenious about this design is if the switch were to fall out of place for whatever reason, the brake lights would remain on, which is a much better behavior than them remaining perpetually off. And if you're curious, you can see that diagonally across the pin 1, 2, and 3, 4 switches, there is no continuity. This assembling the stoplight switch is very straightforward. I just need to pry the black housing away a little bit to allow the blue and black pieces to separate. There's one tab on either side.
taking the brake switch apart, we have three main pieces. The blue part where the connector plugs into this spring. The white part I refer to as a plunger that the brake pedal presses against and this black housing. Taking a closer look at the plunger, there's a flat piece of plastic with a flat piece of metal that is bent in a way to act as two brushes attached to it. I've unintentionally oriented the flat side of the plunger the wrong way. Note that the spring glows within the plunger and the housing has a flat side to it to prevent it from being assembled the wrong way. Looking at the connector, you can see pins one and two on the right go straight through to this center piece right here. The centerpiece between terminals 1 and 2 is independently spring-loaded and is likely made of a good conductor like brass. The terminals themselves also have some sort of good conductor attached to them. You can kind of see those dots in the center of them. It's likely brass and that's to prevent arcing from resulting in welding or rust or corrosion or other problems that occur. This is necessary because the stoplight switch, unlike the brake monitoring switch, has to deliver enough power to turn on the brake lights which require about 45 watts. Here you can see how the plunger with its own spring in the center breaks continuity across terminals one and two when the brake pedal is released and the plunger is depressed by the brake pedal. Here I've hand drawn a diagram depicting how the stoplight switch works. The pedal depicted in blue here when released pushes against the plunger depicted in pink here which pushes against that bra likely brass piece of metal we saw earlier which is depicted in red here which breaks constantly between terminals 1 and 2 which is depicted in green here. And in brown I've drawn one of the springs. There's actually two springs, one within the other. One of them presses against the plunger depicted in pink, and one of them presses against the piece of metal that establishes constantly between terminals 1 and 2 depicted in red here. I think the reason there are two is likely to simplify manufacturing and assembly, or to ensure that continuity is established between terminals 1 and 2 should the switch housing separate. This diagram shows the brake pedal depicted in blue when depressed allows the spring shown in brown to press down on the piece of metal shown in red and the plunger shown in pink allowing it to establish continuity between terminals one and two shown in green and this turns on the brake lights. Here's me demonstrating the brake light circuit opening and closing. These two flat pieces of metal are terminals 3 and 4, as you can see right here. So when the plunger is depressed, that flat piece of metal on the plunger that acts as brushes establishes continuity across terminals 3 and 4. And when the brake pedal is depressed, the plunger lowers and continuity is broken across terminals 3 and 4. Reassembly of the stoplight switch is very easy. The plunger goes in, then the spring, then the upper half, which goes right on top, cannot be installed backwards because as we talked about earlier, there's a flat side to it, and the top half just pops into place. You can see I accidentally cracked a bit of the black housing. Hopefully it'll be okay. Here is a wiring diagram from the factory service manual for the stoplight switch. Notably, the stoplight switch output is fed into ETAX, which is the centralized car computer, and the KOS and OSS ECU, which is for the push to start system. As push to start requires the brake pedal to be depressed for the vehicle to start, so the vehicle will otherwise enter accessory mode. Now finally, to answer the question of what the purpose of the brake monitoring switch is, it is to ensure that cruise control will be cancelled when the brake pedal is depressed. So 
The brake monitoring switch is a normally closed circuit when the brake pedal is not being touched. So if the wiring harness were to be cut for any reason, the brake monitoring switch circuit would open up and cruise control would be canceled. Furthermore, the regular stoplight switch is dependent on the fuse for the brake lights and the brake monitoring switch is completely independent of that improving reliability. This screenshot from the factory service manual describes how the ECM compares the stoplight switch with the brake monitoring switch to ensure that both circuits are working correctly. This screenshot from the factory service mail describes how the active stability control computer can compare the master cylinder brake fluid pressure with the stoplight switch state and using this data it can verify that the stoplight switch is functioning correctly. This screenshot from the factory service mail describes how the automatic Mitsubishi Mirages feed the transmission control module with stoplight switch state data. That data is likely being used for idle neutral control, which has the transmission automatically shift into neutral when the vehicle is stationary. Stoplight switch data is also used by the shift lock solenoid, preventing the vehicle from being shifted out of park without the brake pedal being depressed. Stoplight switch data is also used by the hill start assist system, which prevents the vehicle from rolling back for approximately two seconds after the brake pedal is released. And finally, this is fully speculation on my part, but the stoplight switch data is likely used by the transmission control module to determine when to release the torque converter lockup, as the torque converter needs to be unlocked before the vehicle comes to a full stop, otherwise the vehicle will stall. Thank you for watching. Please leave any questions, comments, or concerns down below.